Hello friends, welcome to our today's topic. Laundering of cellulosic, silks and woolens. Fabrics made from natural fibers have unique properties that requires proper care during laundry process. Cellulosic fabrics such as cotton and linen shrink while laundering and protein fibrics such as silk may not show much shrinkage. Some fabrics attract more dust and some are very hygienic fibers. Some fabrics sag while drying such as wool, others are not. Cotton and linen fabrics gain strength when they are wet. Others lose strength in wet condition. So, less friction should be used for removal of soil. Therefore, the washing procedures have to be based on the fabric qualities. The fabrics use type of soil present in the fabrics are also other factors for consideration during laundering. Fabrics meant for apparel and home purposes are to be washed by adopting appropriate procedures. Laundering of cotton and linen. Cotton and linen fabrics are natural cellulosic fabrics and generally similar laundering procedures are adopted for these. Laundering includes mainly washing and finishing of used or soiled clothes. The following steps are involved in laundering. The first step is to sort the clothes by color. White clothes are generally washed separately as there is scope for getting stained from colored clothes. Light and fast colored articles can be washed together. Dark and light colored articles of moderate color fastness can be washed separately. It is better to wash soil articles separately. Sorting can also be done based on the fitness or delicacy of the articles. The articles may be sorted as follows. Delicate articles such as blouses, dresses, shirts, trousers, saris, frocks, handkerchiefs, etc. Bed sheets, towels, furnishings, etc. And the third category is work clothes, dusters, dishcloths, children's soiled play clothes and so on. The next point is checking and mending. The articles should be checked thoroughly for any stains and tears or holes. Once the articles are placed in water, some stains may not be visible but again appear after drying. So, it is always better to remove the stains before washing by following appropriate methods of stain removal. The holes or tears should be mended before washing. Otherwise, the holes become larger during washing and may become unmanageable after washing. The loose or detachable accessories such as laces, metal buttons, shoulder pads, attached bows, collars and pins etc. on garments should be removed before washing. The pockets should be emptied. The zips should be closed to prepare it for washing. The next is steeping. Steeping is pre-preparation for washing. The articles are steeped in water, generally cold water, so that the fabric absorbs water and loosens soil partly. Steeping in water facilitates the absorption of sweat and body odors in garment. Soil materials need steeping for a longer time, maybe overnight, before washing. The waterborne stains will also be removed during steeping. It saves the amount of detergent used for washing. Soiled white clothes may be steeped in warm water containing a detergent or a bleach for overnight. The detergents containing an enzyme may be employed in cold water 
to help in removal of protein based stains such as blood and milk. Oily or greasy stains may be sprinkled with chalk powder and left for some time to remove the excess oil. Later, the detergent powder may be rubbed over the stain in dry condition. This helps in removal of the stain during washing. Colored cottons having poor fastness should not be steeped for a longer time or if it is not soiled much it does not require any steeping. Addition of vinegar or salt is recommended to control bleeding of color in water and refixing of the color on textiles. Let us understand boiling. Boiling cottons can disinfect the clothes and also remove heavy soil. Cotton is being used in operation theatres as it withstands high temperatures and provide disinfectant clothes. Let us understand washing. Various types of detergents are available in the market today for washing different fabrics starting from delicate to heavy. Light duty detergents are selected for delicate articles like blouses, hankies, mulmul fabrics, cambric, argandis, etc. Heavy duty detergents with strong builders are used for washing and heavy fabrics such as bed sheets, work clothes, kitchen towels, napkins, aprons, swaps, etc. For most of the casual wear articles, ordinary detergents can be used. If required, white clothes can be bleached using chlorine bleach or javeli water made from soda and lime water and hydrogen peroxide. To make effective bleaching, it may be carried out in warm water. Care must be taken to avoid over bleaching of the articles. Delicate fabrics are hand washed with lightly pressure by kneading and rubbing the soiled portions like necklines, hemlines, collars, underarm areas, cuffs, etc. Cotton articles such as shirts, daily wears, clothes, rough articles, sari petticoats, etc. may need more pressure by scrubbing with soft bristle brush at the collars, cuffs, hemlines, etc. Heavy fabrics such as bed linen, table linen, towels, etc. need thorough scrubbing and agitation. Kitchen articles may be washed in warm or hot water using an enzyme based heavy duty detergent with more scrubbing and agitation. As children's casual clothes are delicate but contain soil, hand wash with more pressure are recommended with a suction washer. Care must be taken to select the correct wash cycle in machine washing to avoid damage to the articles. Colored cottons with poor color fastness should washed quickly to avoid much color bleeding. Addition of vinegar or salt helps to control the bleeding as well as refix the dye on the material. Let us understand rinsing. The washed clothes should be rinsed thoroughly to remove the traces of detergent and bleach. At least two times rinsing is compulsory. Optical brightness and softness if used should be added in the final rinse. Let us understand stiffening and bluing. Cotton fabrics need stiffening to improve its body unlike linen which is generally stiff in nature. Starch is used to stiffen cotton clothes. The amount of stiffness required is based on the end use. Saris, shirts, dresses may require medium stiffening to help in proper draping. All lightweight cottons are stiffened using light starch. Table mats, tray covers, servettes, etc. need more stiffening. The starch solution should be properly made and generally 
the solution should be transparent before placing the articles to be stiffened. Heavy articles such as bed linen, bath towels, hand towels, petticoats, sari blouses and other underwear are never starched. White cottons may be blued to improve the whiteness of the fabrics. Colored articles are never blued. Blue is added to the starch solution and after mixing thoroughly, the fabrics are allowed to work in solution for few minutes for better penetration of blue and starch. Blue is an optical brightener that helps in reflecting good white color. Ringing and drying. Once the articles are washed and rinsed, the excess moisture present in the fabrics should be removed either by wringing in hand or spin drying in case of machine wash. Delicate articles may be pressed between the arms to avoid damage to the fabrics. White clothes or articles are always dried in sun as sunlight helps in producing good white color by further bleaching. All colored articles are to be dried in a shadow to avoid fading of the color due to degradation of colored materials by ultraviolet rays. Generally, drying is done on spreading the articles vertically in lengthwise direction on the clothesline by turning the colored articles onto the wrong side. The articles must be removed after sufficient drying. Prolonged drying is not required. Let us understand ironing. The cellulosic fabrics need dampening before ironing to smooth out the wrinkles. Therefore, all articles should be sprayed with water individually and rolled to allow the spreading of moisture evenly in the fabric. Dampening may also soften the highly starched fabrics. Several types of handy sprays are available to sprinkle water on fabric surface. The surface of the ironing board should be kept clean and maintained without any wrinkles. The articles should be spread flat on iron table top, easing any wrinkles formed. The automatic irons provided the temperature control required for each fabric or fabric type. For other types of irons, the temperature should be tested before placing them on the main fabric. Ironing should be done with even lengthwise strokes. For delicate fabrics, a press cloth may be used to protect the main fabric surface. Knowledge of folding different types of garments and furnishings is required. Laundering of woolen and silk fabrics. Wool and silk fabrics are protein in nature. The characteristics of protein fibers have to be kept in mind while laundering these fabrics. The sensitivity to the alkalis limits the use of detergent and other laundry agents on protein fibers. Another important aspect is to avoid high temperatures and friction during laundering unlike cellulosics. Laundering of woolen fabrics. Among all type of fabrics, woolen fabrics need utmost care during laundering as moisture, temperature and friction leads to felting of wool. This causes shrinkage which is irrevocable. Stretching when wet produces permanent distortion and therefore drying in a hanging condition should be avoided and it should be dried flat. The woolen articles are either knitted or woven. The knitted garments like sweaters or pullovers cardigans etc lose shape during washing. So it is preferable to take the outline of the shape of the garment on a paper before washing so that it serves as a guide for final washing. The holes of any present should be mended by using a croquette needle and a matching wool thread. Shaking the garments remove the dry dust. 
Soaking of the fabric is to be avoided as wool absorbs moisture around 30% of its weight and becomes unmanageable during washing. The stains, if any, should be removed using neutral or acidic reagents. A neutral or mild detergent can be used for washing. Tepid, lukewarm water aids in removal of dirt from the fabric. Even rinsing should be carried out in warm water as uneven temperature causes shrinkage of wool. Using mild or neutral detergent in tepid water make good lather and enter the garments. By kneading and squeezing, the dirt can be removed. Care should be taken not only to use any type of friction. While rinsing, support should be given to hold the weight of the fabric in hand to avoid stretching. The fabric can be pressed in between the palms and later can be rolled in the towel to remove the excess water. If the outline of the article is present, it should be placed on it and stretched to shape. It needs to be dried completely flat under the shade. While finishing, use the iron with the controlled set on wool temperature. The article should be ironed after drying completely on the right side using a damp press cloth. The iron should not glide on the surface. It should be pressed lightly with iron, taking care not to keep the iron at the point for a long time. The articles should be left in airy place before storing to remove the excess moisture present if any. The oven woolen material should be pressed on the wrong side along lengthwise grain using a dry or wet press cloth. It may also be ironed using steam iron. Light and sheer woolen fabrics should be pressed at lower temperature than the wool set temperature. Napped wool should be pressed with a wool press cloth in order to raise the nap without flattening. Ironing should be carried in the direction of the nap. In tailored garments, seams should be ironed open. To avoid edge imprint, several layers of tissue paper may be inserted under the seam allowances, pocket flaps, darts, pleats, hemlines, etc. Laundering of silk. Consumers use silk in the form of saris, dress materials, coats and jackets, furnishings, etc. They prefer to dry clean silks rather than washing to restore the luster of skills. As silk is a protein fiber, it needs special care during laundering. While laundering silk, one should avoid alkaline detergents and regans, high temperature and friction. Naturally, silk is a clean fiber and it does not attract dust. It is olefilic meaning it absorbs oily easily and difficult to remove. The silk fabrics should be prepared for laundering by mending all the holes and tears and removing metal buttons if any. Stains if any must be removed using mild detergent solution in warm water. It will be effective on fresh stains. For removing old stains, a weak solution of borax or sodium perborate may be used on the colored silks. For white silks, hydrogen peroxide with few drops of ammonia will be effective. Steeping may not be required for silks as its smooth surface will not hold much dust. However, heavily soiled silk may be soaked in warm water with little borax. It is always better to use soft water for washing as well as rinsing. A mild detergent, preferably liquid detergent, is suitable for silk. Liquid detergents specifically for wool and silk are available in the market. The articles may be placed in warm water with a detergent foaming lather. By kneading and squeezing through the lather, the dirt is removed. 
The articles are rinsed thrice in soft warm water. The final rinse may be in cold water to which few drops of lime juice or vinegar are added to restore the lustre or and brightness of the silks. Even if the color bleeds, the addition of vinegar brightens the appearance by reflexing the dye. Silk articles should be wrung, instead the excess water is removed by pressing in hand. Delicate silks can be rolled in towels to remove excess moisture. Use of Rita nut juice for washing is an old but still continued practice. These nuts should be opened to remove the seeds and soaked overnight for extracting the juice. It should be filtered and allowed to lather before washing. This mild soap is ideal for colored silks. Stiffening is an option for silks as it depends on the type of drape required. Generally, gum arabic is used to help to maintain the luster of fabrics by providing transparent layer on the surface. Starch should never be used as it dulls the fabric. Drying may be carried out in shade by hanging large articles like saris on clothes line. Smaller articles may be rolled in towels to remove excess water. Silks should be ironed with little dampness left in fabric. For ironing, water is not sprinkled as in case of cellulosics due to water marks that are seen on the fabric surface after ironing. Moderate iron temperature is required for ironing silks. The button may be set on silk in case of automatic irons. While the pale colored silks are ironed on the right side to improve the sheen. Dark colored and special textured fabrics are ironed on the wrong side. They should be aired before storing. Washing machines have become common in most of the cities and towns for washing clothes. Majority of the washing machines are programmed with different wash cycles suitable for washing various textile articles. Careful selection of appropriate wash cycle is paramount in getting successful results. Fabric conditioners or softeners available for all fabrics to make them soft and smooth after washing and provide fresh odors. These are added in the final wash. Sometimes these acts as antimicrobial. Softeners on wool and silk may not be required. Students, we have seen how garments and furnishings are washed and finished after use. There are varied options available for purchase of detergents, stiffening and whitening materials in the market. Selection of appropriate detergent as per the fiber content in the fabric is very much required to maintain the fabrics for giving good serviceability. I hope you have enjoyed today's topic. See you all again.